Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit Online, and thank you for inviting us into your home each week. If these meditations bring inspiration and comfort to your week, I hope that you will consider sharing them with your friends or family. You can like and share on Facebook, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for continuing to be here. We have some exciting things happening in the months ahead, and uh, the most important thing probably to get on your calendar is we hope to be worshiping outside full worship service on September 27th. Our noisy offering this month and September is going to support the shoe ministry of Pastor Ty Taylor over in Aurora. Gift cards or cash are the easiest way to make the right shoes happen. Also, we're going to be collecting boxer shorts for both men and women who, have served, who are served by Ty's ministry. You can call it an Undie Sunday, but we're going to be collecting them for over the next five weeks. Backyard Communion continues. We gather at 8.30 or 9.15 on Sundays. Please be sure to register online, lchscentennial.org, and you do not need to be a member in order to be, participate. It would be great to see some other folks who are viewing these videos at home. Also at 10 a.m., I open up a Zoom for live communion in your home. If you haven't been receiving this email, I invite you to call Sarah and she will be sure to send you a link to this Zoom meeting. Thanks again for filling up our prayer flag line. Keep writing out your prayers on those uh, pieces of cloth and then hanging them outside along the line in, on University Boulevard. We continue with our food collection each week. The grocery cart is outside the church each day, Monday through Friday, between 10 and 3 or 4 or so. And also, it's out front on Sunday mornings during Backyard Communion. I'd like to also thank you for your continued financial support of Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit. Many of you have continued to give online. Some of you stop by and put your donations in the lock box. And some of you continue to mail your donations and offerings. We couldn't make plans for the fall and into next year without your continued faithfulness and generosity. Please know that we continue to lift you in prayer each week. And again, thanks for inviting us into your home. Now I invite you to light a candle in your space as a visible sign, a symbol, and a reminder of the Holy Spirit's presence and partnership with our work in the world. We continue our midweek theme of transformation with this story of Jesus' first miracle, the changing of water into wine at the wedding in Cana. Cana is in Galilee, and Jesus makes his home and performs his first miracle in Gentile territory. Jesus' life and ministry will go beyond the boundaries of nation and of race. This is a private, quiet miracle. Only a few people, including the reader, know what happened. Jesus was also reluctant to perform this miracle. Maybe God's glory is not what humans expect it to be. Throughout scripture, when people meet Jesus, transformation happens. But who is transformed in this story? Why is this story one of Jesus' most well-known miracles? Remember, transformation begins with love and acceptance. How can I open my heart and hear something new today that might change me? God, transformer of lives. We look to you. May we have the enthusiasm of Zacchaeus. We want to see. May we be willing to go out of our way to climb obstacles to behold you. We want to see you. May we be confident in our stature, our status as your beloved. We want to see you. May we count the kingdom as our highest treasure. We want to see you. May we be willing to give away all possessions and power to receive the riches of grace. We want to see you. May we have the openness of Christ, who is a guest of sinners. We want to be like you. May we have the mind of Christ, who sought out the lost. We want to be like you. May we have the priorities of Christ, 
who disregarded those who grumbled at his ways. We want to be like you. May we have the compassion of Christ, who loved all the poor and powerless. We want to be like you. May we have the grace of Christ, who forgave even those who abused their power. We want to be like you. As we read and study your word. May we be transformed. Amen. Amen. We continue with our practice of Lectio Divina today as we read the scripture three times and take some time for reflection and potentially journaling in between. Before we read the first time, notice if any phrase or sentence or word stands out. Notice what thoughts, feelings, or ideas come to you. Listen with the ear of your heart. A reading from John, chapter 2, 1 to 12. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. You might want to pause the video at this time to do some reflection, reflection and wondering about that reading. What word or what phrase stood out to you? And you may want to take some time to do some journaling or maybe even pull out a piece of paper and do a little coloring on that word or that phrase. As we read the passage a second time, what thoughts, feelings, or ideas do you hear this time as it's read? What words ring out in your heart or in your mind's eye? What did you notice about the reading, about the background, and about the staging that took place? On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. No, standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water and they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the, the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have be, been, become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, 
he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. Now would be a good time if you'd like to pause the video and take some time with what you heard. What did you notice in the reading? What stood out in the words or the actions? What does the reading tell us about God? What was God up to in this story? As we read this text again, what conversion of mind, heart, or life is Jesus asking? Who is transformed? And how does that happen? And what does this transformation mean? On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brother and his the brothers and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. You may want to pause the video one last time as you contemplate and wonder how it is that transformation took place in this reading. Has anything changed in you? What would you like to see change? How are you maybe being transformed? What might you do in your daily life that demonstrates this transformation? What might you be called to do? We continue with our prayers. Gracious God, teach us to pray before we act. Holy Spirit, teach us to honor your presence in all people.
when we are afraid or don't know what to do. Gift us with your spirit of hope and clarity. songwriter and performer of peace, justice, and creation songs. He was born in Joliet, Illinois, and he studied at Luther College in Decorah, Iowa, and Lutheran Theologic, Luther Theological Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota, where he completed his MDiv in 1972. From 1972 to 1976, he was a Lutheran campus pastor at the University of Minnesota. He left the pastoral ministry in 1976 for a career as a performing artist, songwriter, worship leader, and musical consultant. He has also served as a consultant for men's issues for the American Lutheran Church, an associate for worship and music at Loras College in Dubuque, Iowa, and Augsburg College in Minneapolis, and a music director at Westwood Lutheran Church in St. Louis Park, Minnesota and Trinity Lutheran in Minneapolis. He plays the flute and guitar, composes and publishes music, and presents concerts. His song collections include With All Your Heart, Songs and Liturgies of Encouragement and Hope, and Dancing at the Harvest. Receive this benediction. 
May you hear the voice of God. In the midst of a raging storm. In the quiet breeze. In the busy city. In the forest silent. In a loving whisper. In a fierce cry. In classic harmony. In a hard rock beat. In a modest hymn. May you never miss these words. I have fallen in love with you, O oh my beloved. Come and follow me. May the God of invitations, surprises, and mysteries bless you and guide you always. Amen. <laughs>